हरि ओम ओम नारायण सुरगुर जगदेकनाथ भक्त प्रिय सकल लोक नमस्कृत त्रैगुण्यवर्जित मजम विभुमाशम वंदे भवघ्नमरासुर सिद्ध वंद्य नारायणा पिपूर्ण गुणान वाया विश्वोदय स्थितल नियत प्रदाय ज्ञान प्रदाय विबुधा सुरसौख्य दुखा सत्कारणा विततताय नमो नमस्ते आसीदार गुणवारी प्रमेय नारायण परतम परमात्स एक संशात संविद किल जठरे निधाय लक्ष्मी भुजातरगत स्वरतूति चाग्रे तस्ोदरस्थ जगत सदमंद सांद्रस्वानंद तुष्टवपुषो किरमत्स्य भूत निजाश्रित जनस्थ हि सृज्य सुष्टा वीक्षा बभूव परनाम निमेश कांते नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये महत्वाधारवत्च महाभारत मुच्य निरुक्तम से यो वेद सर्व पापुच्य यदि तदन्स्ति नुत्रचि देव नारायण नर्वदोष विवर्जित पिपूर्ण गुरु शागीता वक्षा लेश लक्ष्मी नारायण नूर्णबोधान गुरून पी कूर्म श्रीकृष्ण गीताया भाष्यादुक्ताथ संग्रह हरि ओ welcome everyone this is the weekly ones pratipadartha uh, room uh, we have completed the six chapters so far we started this exercise somewhere in december last year and so far we have completed the six chapters uh, plus we began the journey with the 15th chapter purushottam yoga the name of the club is inspired from the 15th chapter uh, we look at purushottam yoga as a uh key to understanding the entire bhagavad gita so in the uh six chapters that we have seen so far we have seen little bit on the the vishada yoga vishada itself in the form of yoga a very beautifully defined problem from arjuna unlike the same chapter we see the issues with duryodhana but irreparable type of problems from duryodhana but arjuna's case is a little more workable uh, he knows whom to surrender to he knows who who the sponsor of his problem is who can solve his problem and he is able to articulate uh, there is a lot of yoga in that we have discussed about that and then we move on to sankhya sankhya is that uh, the discerning knowledge the analytical knowledge you know separating the wheat from the chaff and the dehi deha the atma and the deha so sharira so there is a lot of Uh, analysis that we get to see, and then towards the end of it, Krishna's message is be stira buddhi, no stita dhi, like no stita prajna. That's the whole concept of the second chapter. And then we have more questions, and then we move on to karma. Karma is all about understanding the essence of activity. We are all in action, some or the other action. So long as there is jiva, there so long as there is life inside all of us, we are doing some or the other action. That's inevitable. hence it's always better to do the ordained act, action the vihita karma then there is yajnartha karma then there is loka sangraha karma at the end of the day all of these culminates to swadharma so keep performing the swadharma right but then there are issues uh, that is where we are leading to the awareness the jnana jnana and the karma sanyasa uh, basically the jnana is to help us achieve that karma sanyasa while we do the action action is necessary we also need to renounce from attachments to the results of the action that's the most important aspect uh, otherwise there are bound to be emotions that will distract us from the path of doing the action and that is where we are leading to the jnana karma sanyasa the awareness of what is it that really really governs everything that's the jnana and that should help us achieve the karma sanyasa and then we have a detailed chapter on the karma sanyasa sanyasa right the fifth chapter all about uh, giving our uh, material attachments and then kind of keep doing the action and in that process three part uh, lecture we saw from krishna a sanyasa is always yoga yukta sanyasa b in the karma yoga and then do the do the karma sanyasa which is uh, do the selfless act of action 
and then do that for the sake of uh, brahmi sthiti the sanyasa is the brahmi sthiti do it for the sake of the big picture the brahmi sthiti is doing things for the big picture and internalizing that you know brahma yoga yukti now easier said than done then he goes on giving very detailed description on the dhyana the dhyana or the atma sanyama which is basically some techniques around how to control our manas which can be extremely restless and wandering type it can keep on going here and there so how to bring it back so we get to see some nice uh dhyana yoga techniques in the last chapter the the one that we saw in the sixth chapter and that will that will stop us uh in many many commentaries we get to see that the entire bhagavad gita can be broken down into three sections they call it the shatka the hexad every sixth chapter set of six chapters is one shatka uh, a set of uh, one hexad all six chapters so there are different ways in which people try to understand what is it being conveyed in the first hex side what is it being conveyed in the second hex side what's the thing message in the third hex side you know the first shot uh, there are different ways in which people tend to look at it as the codified uh, elucidation of the tattva which is the tattva masi the big uh, shruti vakya tattva masi tat asi tvam is the three shot according to some commentaries some people try to codify saying that you no know, oh, this is nothing but jnana bhakti vairagya uh these are the three essential skills needed jnana bhakti vairagya are the three essential skills when we get into other scriptures like brahma sutra that is the whole essence of the sadhana the jnana bhakti vairagya so the first shatka is the jnana second is the bhakti and the third is the uh, vairagya that's that's the way people but what we are trying to do here is we are trying to see if there is a message from krishna himself that will help us understand what are the three shatkas trying to say and for us the clue is the second shloka of the second chapter where he says uh, oh arjuna what you are trying to do right now he is anarya jushta aswargya akirti kara it is unbefitting of an arya uh, and it is aswargya kara it, it doesn't take you anywhere higher and akirti kara it will, it will bring you in semi when we look at that perhaps that's the clue the first chapter the first six chapters the first shatka or the hex as we call it in a way it is about helping a person become arya jushta become an arya arya we saw the definition one who relentlessly performs his duty kartavyam acharet karyam akartavyam anachare tishthati prakrta achare sah arya iti vaismrita so the one arya always relentlessly in the path of kartavya so kartavya sadaka and that is what we keep hearing right all throughout it's all about doing your karma you know give up the karma attachments of the results you know and then develop dhyana to be able to perform that karma you know unlock that dhyana which also comes so it's all about kartavya at the end of the day keep on doing and from that point when we extend the thought the second chapter which is where we are right now the seventh chapter is the beginning of the second chapter or second big fact it's the path towards swarga swarga is inching higher and higher and higher so in bhagavad gita later we hear that meru shikari nam aham among the peaks he is the meru and the peak of meru is swarga right in one of the puranas when you see the stories when you look at amarakosha also swarga is defined as the peak of meru and meru is the peak of so the peak you know whenever we want to peak you know find my peak like when we we have this usual uh, idiomatic reference right oh he is performing in his peak you know this batsman in his peak of his career you know he is scoring goals in the peak of his career like you no know, a peak is where they have really achieved their maximum potential right so when somebody has unlocked their zenith unlocked their maximum potential that's the peak you no know, peak for each one of us you no know, is at a different level and that different level perhaps comes with how much of prayatna we put you know how much of attempt we to put how much of atma jnana we unlock and this shatka perhaps is that swarga para right? taking us higher and higher and higher right and it begins with the chapter that we call as the jnana karma sorry jnana vijnana yoga right jnana vijnana whenever we see the word we 
upasarga v it is vishesh visheshta visheshta uh, what kind of a visheshta because visheshta is basically distinguished jnana what what is the so much distinguished about that jnana we will perhaps see that so this is uh, uh, you know uh, we are now moving into the seventh chapter now after having seen the six chapters you click on the link provided by shraddha ji this is a very useful website put together by dr sampadananda for the aurobindo uh, ashram uh, the, the structure is what we primarily uh, bank on from this uh, uh, scripture so we click on that we directly move on to shloka number 1 from the seventh chapter one second om maya sattamana partha yogam yunjanmadashray asamshayam samagram mam yatha jnasya sitachhuno so bhagavan uvacha maya sattamana partha yogam yunjanmadashray asamshayam samagram mam yatha jnasya sitachhuno we scroll down a little bit of the web page we see a section called padacheda basically all the words are split it says bhagavan uvacha shri bhagavan uvacha mai asakta manaha becomes mai asakta there are some things right mai asakta manaha partha yogam yunjan mat ashraya mat ashraya becomes mad ashraya asamshayam samagram mam yatha jnasyasi tat shruno tat shruno becomes tat shruno right so there are some things we can pay attention to that and we get familiar with the different sandhi patterns so these are the broken down set of words when we unjumble the words and put them into a proper prose order that is what we get to see in the section just above called the anvaya anvaya gives us the prose order it reads like this shri bhagavan uvacha he partha mai asakta manaha mat ashraya yogam yunjan yatha samagram mam asamshayam jnasyasi tat shruno what does that mean we check the link on the top called dictionary right we click on dictionary along the same prose order we get the word by word meaning and that is what we can put together he partha o prathasam o arjuna mai asakta manah you know those who are who are having their asakti in me who are leaning towards me who are attached to me with mind attached to me mat ashraya no who take ashraya in me mat ashraya is the one who take ashraya basically one who take shelter under me take refuge under me with me as the ashraya beautiful in this website uh, you know dr samparananda refused to give the translation kept it as non translatable which is nice yogam yunjan no yoga is to yoga yunjan being engaged being attached by practicing yoga right yatha samagram mam asamshayam jnasyasi no the way they have to know me completely integrally samagram i know samagram is detail integrally completely asamshayam without any reminder of doubt okay they have to know okay tat shruno listen to that right he partha those yogis who are engaged in the practice of yoga by constantly focusing on me and taking refuge under me right how they need to know me the way they have to know me completely and without any modicum of doubt any iota of doubt you know asamshayam listen to that that's what he says let's quickly see what arobindo translation says the arobindo translation says uh, the arobindo interpretation the blessed lord said bhagavan vacha here o partha he partha how by practicing yoga with a mind attached to me yogam yunjan mat ashraya uh, maya sakta manaha and with me as the ashraya the whole basis lodgement uh, point of resort of the conscious being and action you know mat ashraya thou shalt know me ki yatha jnasasi without any reminder of doubt you know asamshayam samagram okay integrally okay samagram tat shruno listen to that right why why is krishna saying this see a couple of things to note here one is that 
Arjuna's last question is, okay, I, I get the point that we have to be in the path of Yoga Siddhi. But in the path of Yoga Siddhi, you say, I have to be so, so resolute that even if I don't achieve my complete success in the current life, you know, Aneka Janma Sam Siddha Tato Yati Param Gatim, you said, absolutely brilliant. Right? I agree. But, you know, the Manas is, is so, so fragile. It is so, so restless. It's easy to miss the bus. You know, if ayati, the, the question is even more fine, right, from Arjuna. Ayatihi Shraddhaya Utetaha. Shraddha, right? Shraddha is a very beautiful word. You know, uh, there is Sumanatva, okay, good manas. You know, Shuddha Buddhitva, Shuddha Matitva, clean buddhi. You know, Anindakatva, never insulting anyone, sort of a thing. And Ananya Gatitva, you know, without resorting to any other path. You know, these four qualities put together perhaps will give us the indication of what the Shraddha should be, right? When, when somebody says they are with Shraddha, quite often they are not in English. We get to see that, you know, you have to, uh, you know, uh, have faith. Faith is what they call as Shraddha. Shraddha is called as, but when we look at the Amarakosha, it's a combination of faith, belief, trust, you know, uh, absolutely resolute, you know, perseverant, you know, uh, uh, you know mindset. You know, few things. So we can, we can grossly put it, put the word Shraddha. Though in our approach, we don't get another Samanatha Kabara. There is no synonym for Shraddha. You know, suma, you know uh, Sumanatva, you know, good mind. You know, Shuddha Matitva, clean buddhi. Uh, Aninda Katva, without any kind of a disregard for anything. Uh, you know, there are beautiful definitions of that that come uh, when, we, when we look into, uh, you know, uh, things like uh, Atri Samhita and things like that. There are there are beautiful. They, you know, each of those terms, you know, these complex complex terms will be defined at the end of the day. Right? But in a simplistic sense, we can call it as you know, Sumanatva, Shuddha Matitva, Anindakatva, Ananya Gatitva, without any other path in my mind. And that's so Arjuna says, you know, Shraddhaya Upeta, I am completely endowed with that Shraddha, but some something gets unfulfilled, where do I go? You know, so well, one thing we need to note, right? Arjuna has now stopped asking, tell me what is good for me. You know, all this, you know, about Shreya, what is Shreyaskara for him? He stopped asking that. Now, the question from Arjuna is at a little higher level. Now, while explaining that, Krishna said two things, right? One, there is no loss of effort for, you know, uh, the current life. Partha na eva iha na amutra vinashaha tasya vidyate. This effort that you put for the yoga samsiddhi, there is no loss of that effort neither here nor hereafter, which is in the current life nor in the life after. Right? Very distinguished. And then in the sixth chapter, we get keep on hearing from Krishna how it is going to add up to your next life. Right, the incremental yoga samsiddhi that you acquire little by little, you know, adding up to you know, aneka janma samsiddha. Like, you know, you keep on adding your punya, uh, you know, uh, balances from each janma, you keep on going higher and higher and higher. And we also looked at in a little more broader sense, right? The janma, marana, is constantly happening. We are all dying every moment, we are all taking birth into a new avatar. You know, every moment there is a lot of birth and death. That happens within this one life of ours, right? So we have spoken about that, but you know there is an incremental progress that keeps happening by adding your residual punya. And towards the end of it all, Krishna makes this statement, you know, uh, or, or, or the, the the last sloka, you know, yogi namapi sarvesha madgate na antaratmana shraddha van bhajate yoma same yukta tamo mataha. That's where we concluded, right? The sixth chapter. We concluded with that uh, shloka. Even among the yogis, okay, among lot of lot of yogis, sarvesham, madgatena, by by completely aligning themselves towards me, antaratmana, with complete pledge from their 
inner instrument like you no know, from all their antakarana they constantly lean towards me they are all directing all their antakaranas towards me madgatena antaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yoma dosh shraddha endowed people who keep doing bhajana to me bhajana is vibhajana they offer themselves to me like in karma like for example in bhishma bhishma's uh, kurukshetra prasanga uh, his nine days of the war he is doing bhagavan bhakti he doesn't like killing the pandava army but he was doing it as a bhagavat karya he has to do a dharma karya right because when krishna has come to the planet to do the bhubhara harana to reduce the weight of the adharma there is a role for everyone every dharmika has a role to play there are some adharmikas in the pandava side also and that is what bhishma charya was primarily reducing right inside so bhishma charya as much as he hated you know playing that role in the war and not just another role right he was the commander in chief right and and the only way you can do something like that you know completely against your natural likes and dislikes and then do it only because that is what is right you know that is your dharma okay that is bhagavat karya he offered himself to shraddhavan bhajate yoma same yukta tamo mata he is the one who is who is the best according to me yukta tama like you know, he is the supreme nishkama bhagavat sevaka Right? that's the kind of a definition you can see now he said you know do my bhajana but he never said how to think of me who am i he never mentioned that right so far krishna revealed few things about himself in the bhagavad gita little bit in the fourth chapter like you know yada hidaya hidha the para tattva he explained a little bit but still we don't have the full explanation as to what exactly he is perhaps now he is coming to that right now that is why let let me tell you the complete thing about me people those those yogis who constantly engage all their activities towards me you know the way they need to know me because in the previous shloka he said think about me all the time and offer yourself to me how to think of you natural question would come so good thing about bhagavad gita is wherever some of these questions remain unanswered in a particular shloka either bhagavan preemptively gives the clarification like what he is doing currently because in the previous shloka he did say offer yourself to me that kind of a shuddhavan yogi who keeps himself constantly to me he is the ultimate right he is the best according to me yukta tamah iti me mata that's what he said right if either he explains that preemptively or arjuna na from now on we will see that from now on arjuna does not leave any chance for doubt whatever need to be clarified he will definitely ask that question if bhagavan has not preemptively answered it arjuna will ask that question so this is the interesting point about bhagavad gita from now on over are the times of tell me krishna what is good to be you know done by me what is it that's good for me we are done with that now we are getting into a higher and higher level you know being arya jushta being that absolute kartavya sadaka i mean not in hearing the story but you know internalizing some of the techniques that are being taught until the sixth chapter from now on once we become kartavya sadaka then it's all about going higher and higher and higher aru ruksho munehe yogam karma karana muchate that's what we heard in the beginning of the so the yoga samsiddhi is a continuous present state it keeps on going forward and forward right so so krishna is now answering mai asakta manaha those who are interested in me who are you know leaning towards me mat ashraya you know who are taking refuge under me yogam junjan yatha mam jnasyasi you know the way they need to know me while they do the yoga yukta you know acts right samagram asamshayam tat shrunu you know know that from me in complete integrated manner in a complete manner without leaving any iota of doubt now this is another interesting term asamshayam samagram does it mean to say that a bhakta will know everything about bhagavan so many many bhashakara say the samshayam and the samagram they both are applicable to the bhagavan i right? know from his point of view he is telling it without any iota of doubt and he is telling it completely we can only catch little or whatever little we can catch we will catch and we will see that later because some of the messages that's going to come in the next few shlokas will be repeated multiple times right so that's basically so it's a continuation to the sixth chapter where we ended the sixth chapter the same thing has been taken forward by bhagavan that you know know me now let me tell you more about me 
So I think from now we will hear more about him, right? So we that we move on to the next book. Huh? On the top of the page, we see a link, uh, hyperlink called next. We click on that. We go to the second shloka of the seventh chapter. Jnanam te ham sabijnanam midam vaksham yashe shataah yadnyatva neha bhuyo nyatnyata vyama vashishyate. Jnanam te ham sabijnanam idam vaksham yashe shataah yadnyatva neha bhuyo nyatnyata vyama vashishyate. You see the Patacheda, scroll down a little bit. Jnanam. ते अहम ते अहम विकम ते हम सभी ज्ञानम इदम वक्ष्यामी अशेषतः वक्ष्यामी अशेषतः विकम वक्ष्याम यशेषतः फिर से यान संधि फिर से संधि यत ज्ञातवा यत ज्ञातवा लाइक मत आश्रय है मत आश्रय है इसमें दर्द यत ज्ञातवा यत यत ज्ञातवा ना इहा ने हा ना इहा विकम ने हा लाइक महा ईशा महेशा इसमें दर्द ना इहा ने हा भूयह अन्यत भूयो अन्यत दशनदर संधि अन्यत ज्ञातव्यम अन्यत ज्ञातव्यम अवशिष्यते दिस आर द वर्ड्स दैट वी गेट व्हेन वी अनजंबल देम वी पुट देम इनटू अ प्रॉपर सेंटेंस फॉर्मेट इन द अनवया द अनवया गिव्स अस द प्रोज ऑर्डर राइट अहम ते इदम सविज्ञानम ज्ञानम अशेषतः वक्ष्यामि यत ज्ञातवा इह भूयह अन्यत ज्ञातव्यम न अवशिष्यते। What does that mean? You see the dictionary. अहम् I ते इदम् for you this to you this सविज्ञानम् ज्ञानम् अशेषतः वक्ष्यामि। I will tell you this knowledge ज्ञानम् which is along with the विज्ञाना। विज्ञाने न सह सविज्ञाना, right? विज्ञाने न सहिता सविज्ञाना। इदम सविज्ञानम ज्ञानम दिस नॉलेज अलोंग विथ द स्पेशल नॉलेज अशेषतः वक्ष्यामी आई विल टेल यू विदाउट एनी ओमिशन और अ रिमाइंडर शेषा इज द रिमाइंडर राइट अशेषतः विदाउट एनी सच बैलेंस विदाउट एनी लेफ्ट ओवर व्हिच मींस आई आई टेल यू कंप्लीटली यत ज्ञातवा नो हैविंग नोन व्हिच इह हियर भूय अन्यत ज्ञातव्यम नो Another thing to be known here, na avasishyate will not be left, will not be present, will not be there. Right? So let me tell you this knowledge along with the special knowledge, the vijnana. Okay, knowing which you won't have anything further to be known. Right? That's the message. Let's see what the Aurobindo interpretation is. Okay, it says I will speak to you without omission or reminder. Asayishataha, the essential knowledge, jnanam, attended with all the comprehensive knowledge, savijnanam. So vijnana is comprehensive knowledge according to this, which is nice. By knowing which, okay, yet jnatva, there shall be no other thing here left to be known. You know, iha jnatavyam na avasishyati, there is nothing else to be known. One thing we need to take notice: comprehensive. So when, when whenever we hear the word "vi," like vibhuti, vishe, you know, uh, uh, you know, vidyana, you know, visarga, wherever we get the the prefix "vi" added to uh, any of the uh, uh, what do you call uh, any any of the word, like for example, vibhuti is basically vishesha bhuti. Okay, so similarly, vijnana is visheshataha jnana, and we spoke about that earlier, right? What is visheshataha? What is so distinguished about this? Now, according to Aurobindo, it is vistarashaha. Okay, comprehensive is elaborated. It's a very comprehensive knowledge. That's why Aurobindo calls that visheshata, that visheshana, where there is vistara, vividhata, variety, vistara, you know, elaborate. That's you know, together, I think. That's why I like that uh, English translation, comprehensive knowledge. So we here perhaps Aurobindo is bringing the vistarata, visheshata, you know, vividhata, uh, you know, vikrishta. So you know, elaborate, comprehensive knowledge. I think that's a very nice thing. So, but again, right? So whenever we think of uh, uh, vijnana, in the sixth chapter we saw the word vijnana, right? Uh, 
ज्ञान विज्ञान तृप्तात्मा कूटस्थो विजितेन्द्रिय श्लोक इन दिक्स चैप्टर युक्त इतचते योगी समदोषाश्म कांचन दर्ड यू नो दन हू इज एंडोर्ड विथ ज्ञान एंड विज्ञान एंड हू सृप्तात्मा अंतरात्मा नो ही इज ही इज अनकवर्ड द लाइट फ्रॉम विथ इन सो वी सॉ दट ही विल सी नो लोष्टा अश्म कांचन एस द सेम समलोष्टाश्म द्लॉड ऑफ क्ले नो लंप ऑफ मट or stones or even kanchana gold all of them appear the same to him jnana vijnana that's that's the there we saw vijnana as realized knowledge not just the spoken knowledge it's a realized so the more and more manana we do the more and more dharana of a certain concept we do and we internalize that knowledge that is a vijnana we say it is basically the realized knowledge is what we saw and here it's a comprehensive now will comprehensive mean that this vijnana cannot be realized i think both are valid in that vijnana when we saw that in the sixth chapter even that is comprehensive enough but there the emphasis was more on the realization part and here even the realization is there this vijnana we will definitely realize at some point in time but i think the the emphasis right now is to look at the the comprehensive nature of this the elaborate nature of this right so it's both both experienceable as well as comprehensible like you know detailed way i think we should look into both that way and this is where in english many a times the words will get glossed over in terms of the translation but i think it's good to keep both you know it is both comprehensible and it is also experienceable you no know, realizable from the thing we can experience that so i will speak to you without any omission okay uh, you know asheshatah without any left over okay gnanam savijnanam you know the gnana along with and what is this gnana see gnana is is to know all about uh, uh you know the bhagavan right uh, it's the complete parabrahma swarupa you know the pure shuddha swarupa uh the moola swarupa of the bhagavan and we will see that what exactly it is right uh, you know especially when it comes along with the vijnana you know it 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 should be it should be that through which we will know everything that's what krishna is telling right yet nyatva na iha anyat bhuya jnatavyam avashishyate on knowing which you have nothing else to know so very similar to the kind of uh, I mean, see these kind of statements they come in many many shruti sats Like for example, in Chandogya, you know, some of those Upanishads, you know, ye na, you know, ashutam shutam bhavati, amatam matam bhavati, avidnyatam vidnyatam bhavati, you know, some of these lines are very very common. Like you no, know, knowing which you don't have anything more to know. Right? So we will see uh, what kind of a knowledge comes through in the subsequent shlokas. Right? We click on next on the top. So again, this is very important, right? If we have to go along the path of swarga, which is peak you know find the peak in each one of us you no know, shuddha atma swarupa shuddha atma swarupa is basically the far end of the continuum we aim at the sky we perhaps reach the top of the tree right so we can we can certainly find the better us in all of us right and that is more than enough for us to achieve whatever we want to achieve you know siddhi sadhana that we want to achieve you know go higher and higher you know reaching the top of the tree is always a, you know people will take it right without without any sweat people will take that if that is the end outcome so after explaining the benefits of this yoga siddhi in the next slide that is what we saw towards the end of the sixth chapter perhaps this shatka is all about helping us realize how we can be extremely amazing achievers within this current life because na iha vinashah tasya vidyate there is no loss of that effort of yoga samsiddhi in this current life and that is the path towards understanding the vibhuti in all of us while it is the vibhuti of the bhagavan we can see that bhagavan vibhuti in each one of us right so we are led into the path of vibhuti and the path of vibhuti begins by understanding the vijnana right you can't have vibhuti the vishesha bhuti cannot happen without knowing the vishesha jnana i think that is what we are led into and knowing which you don't have anything further to know right now is this interpretation right okay i think perhaps because when we look into the third shloka that's what 
gives me an indication. Let's see what the third sloka says, right? On the top of the screen, we see the next. Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschin maam veti tattvataha. Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschin maam veti tattvataha. I like this shloka. I like every shloka in Bhagavad Gita where we see the word tattva, tattvataha. Because uh, whenever we see them, I, I make I make special note of those shlokas. You know, in the second second chapter we have so every chapter, chapter after chapter, Krishna put the emphasis on tattvataha. Know this by the tattva. Don't just take this as a as a gospel truth. Like just because Bhagavan is telling something, you can't just blindly accept it. Know that through the tattva, put your buddhi, apply your buddhi, and and look at the reality of it. That's what exactly he means. Whenever he brings the word tattvataha, you know, sitas chalati tattvataha in the sixth chapter, you know, the fifth chapter also he says, you know, naiva kinchit karomi ti yukto manye ta tattva vitu. When you know the tattva, you know, you will see that you know you don't do anything at all. None of your actions are your actions. You know, guna guneshu vartanta iti matva. So it's and fourth chapter also he says, you know, Janma karma chami divyam evam yoveti tattvataha. So, tattvataha is very, second chapter he says that, you know, nasato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sataha ubhayorapi drishton tasthvanayos tattva darshibihi. So, he brings in the concept of tattva, know them by tattva, understand it through the tattva, understand it according to the way the tattva darshaka, tattva darshanakara, they have elaborated this entire truth, right? Just don't just take the Gospel truth. Now let's see what this, this is an interesting shloka, right? In the seventh chapter, the third one, beautiful expression of tattva. Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschin maam veti tattvataha. What does the Padacheda give us? Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit yatati kaschid yatati. One Sunday. Siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kaschit maam becomes kaschin maam. Veti Tattvata, the two Sandhis. But yeah, we get this uh, words, right? The uh, the broken down Padacheda words. We unjumble them. We put them into the proper prose order in the Anvaya, right? Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kaschid Siddhaye Yatati. Yatatam Siddhanamati Kaschid Ma Tattvata Veti. It's simple. The Anvaya is pretty much in line with the Shloka. But what does that mean? Sahasreshu Manushyanam Kaschit Siddhaye Yatati. Among thousands of the people, let's click on the dictionary, right? Sahasreshu Manushyanam among thousands of men Kaschit Siddhaye Yatati. Very few here and there. You know, they strive for the sake of Siddhi. Siddhi has been called as perfection. Very nice. It's a beautiful word. Right? Siddhanam Yatatamapi. No, even among the and among the ones who are striving for Siddhi or who are in the path of you know, among, among those striving Siddhis, okay, among those people who are striving for Siddhi, no, Kaschin Maam Tattvata Haditi. Very few here and there know me absolutely by the Tattva. Tattva is the elemental truth. Right? When we break down the what we see, what we grasp, what we understand, when we break down, you know, break them down to into elemental truth. Uh, you know, that's what we see as Tattva. Tattva Darshan, Tattva Sankhya, Tattva Darshana, Sankhya Darshana. They're all interchangeably. They, quite often they come in the same basket, right? In the, uh, in, the, in the pedagogy, when we see the course content, you know, in any of the Vedanta schools and things like that. All of these terms are perhaps used in the same context, right? What he's telling is that among thousands of people who strive for Siddhi, what is Siddhi? Right? See, today most of us will have a very, uh, very one sided view of what uh, Siddhi is. Right? Uh, Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada gives a very good definition in his uh, Bhashya. You know, Siddha Eva Hite Ye Mokshaya Yatante. It's a very beautiful definition. Siddha need not be the one who has achieved the end goal. No, even if you are striving for that moksha, you are a siddhi. 
no siddha eva hi te they indeed alone they verily are siddhas okay ye moksha hi jante those who strive for moksha again what is moksha so far we have heard one instance of moksha being spoken by krishna right in the fourth chapter he says no yajnatva moksha se ashubhat our mukti is only from ashubha what is ashubha anything that is ill feeling bad feeling right so far we can take into that i think we will get more definitions as we go further and further into this uh, bhagavad gita but you know anything ill feeling but we can say you know the the, the bondage of the samsara the samsara bandhana that's the ashubhatva moksha is from the ashubha we hear that right kim karma kim akarma iti kavaya api mohita so tatte karma pravakshami yajnatva moksha se ashubhat when when detailing the nivritti karma in the fourth chapter krishna says that you know so what what adi shankara you know, bhagavad gita says is you know those indeed are siddhas okay who are striving for the moksha that's one definition when we look into avara kosha avara kosha gives us a very beautiful you know samanarthaka pada for siddha siddha siddhi siddha siddhi is lakshmi prakriti right siddha is yogya okay in english when we look into monier williams or apte kind of dictionaries suitableness you know in in uh, in quality engineering we define quality quality as fitness to use right it is a, it is fit to be used like yogya yogya is its capability is it capable enough is it is it right for me to use so kacche ko pakka karo wo siddhi hai like no you you make something wrong into a usable format that is siddhi right i i i am i'm a very raw guy raw person i do some studies and i like for example in dt of some diploma i do i learn some basic skills around plumbing or electrician job or things like that then i am siddhi i am ready so this word even colloquially especially when in kannada telugu like siddha padisu siddha padisu is get them ready right siddha doesn't mean that make him a make him a levitating person a uh, siddha need not be somebody who levitates i mean that's the that's a small myopic understanding we carry but siddha is somebody who is ready right ready for what ready for yoga okay ready for the capable application of his skills okay so there are many many thousands of people who strive for that siddhi that perfection that's a beautiful word here that perfection is a very beautiful i mean siddhi is perfection perfection is a very textbook wish as i said earlier you aim at the skies you might reach the top of the tree right so siddhi i mean we might become the levitator souls we might even do time travel we might do you know shape shifting we might do many things like you know we keep hearing those mystic stories from the monks of the himalayas and all we don't know what it is go to uttarakashi rishikesh we can perhaps see some of these stories but not all can become that i think the message for all of us is for us the siddhi is become suitable in what we want to become a suitable husband suitable father suitable employee suitable boss you know suitable son suitable you know grandson suitable neighbor suitable member in the society suitable citizen you no know, it can be applied it every one of this instance is a, is that siddhi it it's not easy it's not automatically available it's not given we have to strive to become that so among thousands of people very few aspire to become siddhis from that point of view actually you know very few look at striving perfection and among those striving siddhis yatata api siddhana kaschin maam veti only few know me tattvata by the actual tattva see when we look at the tattva the paramatma tattva comes right at the top the tattva tree when we see right pancha mahabhuta the core base then the pancha tanmatras little above these are all the physical realm the pancha jnani indriyas pancha karma indriyas the 20 on top of them comes the manas the 21st and then you know uh, buddhi ahankara chitta pradhana whatever mahat so we see those 24 tattva 25th is sometimes called the purusha and paramatma is the 26th that's the typical vaishnava tattva tree right the, the different tattva trees will elucidate the same things in different granularity like if you look into the tattva tree given by the shaktaya school it might you know list down some 36 different elemental truth right the shak the shaiva tree uh, tattva you know can look at 33 different tattva so there are different so here i mean for a simplistic purpose we look at the vaishnava tree because it's very similar to what 
the purva mimamsa you know the school of thought also puts down right so purusha and on top of purusha comes the uh, paramatma now paramatma so we need to understand right purusha along with the prakriti is what gives us life and then that orderliness of this life is the paramatma the one who's doing the niyamaka governing everything which means if somebody has to taste success it cannot happen without the paramatma amsha coming into play right the the same mango can be spoiled can be amazingly tasty without the paramatma amsha coming into play the purusha does help the life to transform metamorphosize and things like that the purusha prakriti coming together we will see the physical state of that being but for that ultimate siddhi to happen within the mango the paramatma has to come and when we understand the tattva that's how the tattva works and what krishna is telling is there are many many people okay in this planet very few even aspire to become siddhis and among the many siddhis very few understand me through the tattva because now he is about to explain to her explain see this is very beautiful i mean when i look more and more into the shloka it's very difficult for us to list down the success in our life now i have asked many many people can you list down 10 successes that you have achieved in your life people can't people just go lost in terms of listing down the successes in their life but on the other hand ask them can you list down the successes of your neighbor of your best friend you know of your brother they can list down not 10 they can list down 20 30 40 50 so oh, he achieved this he achieved that he achieved this now see on one side we can always be melancholic in terms of that robert frost kind of a mindset right miles to go before i hang up my boots some some something like that but i think deep fundamentally deep within there is a disregard for that gratitude See, today there is a lot of uh, push happening, a lot of uh, uh, encouragement happening, suggestions happening. People are advising people to maintain journals, especially the gratitude journals. It's a big uh, activity, right? Because it's difficult for us to list down what all good things happened in our life, right? Uh, we we tend to be so so entitled in life. In, in two shlokas, uh, two chapters ago, we spoke about this, right? You know. ye hi samsparsha ja bhoga dukha yonaya evate all the things that come into contact okay all the pleasure that are born out of contact with external material are dukha yonaya and the reason why they become dukha yonaya because the minute i acquire something i feel entitled to the attachment right i i never had a footwear in my life the minute i got the first basic footwear which is the hawaii chappal i became entitled now that hawaii is now given to me now if i want to happy if i want to remain happy i need something bigger so the the, the happiness that comes through the physical contacts are short lived not just short lived they become dukha yonaya they will make you go sad very soon they are the foundation of your sorrow primarily because we tend to attach that entitlement okay this is mine and siddhi perhaps is that when we when we struggle to list down the successes i'm sure all of us can attempt this we can't okay now if we are able to list down the successes okay i attained success in this instance okay uh, i at like for example if this is simple thing like you know this bhagavad gita pratipadartha session if i can list it down as a successful event perhaps perhaps i am one step closer to understanding the bhagavad prerana around me none of these things will happen without bhagavad prerana no if you guys think that you know, there is something nice being spoken here that will not happen without bhagavat prerana if i think that you know few people listening to me is actually a worthwhile session for me to have that won't happen without bhagavat prerana when I, when we started the purushottama yoga about almost 10 months ago we conduct something called the every morning uh, guided chanting room right the first day i was chanting both the first time and the second time because there is nobody people come they listen to somebody doing this chanting for a couple of seconds and then go people come people go but nobody coming no shraddha ji who is now the moderator right? she is one of the first people to who came in fact the second person the second person who came up on stage and then remained since then she has been chanting right this is about last year august something like that yeah? so almost 10 11 months ago we started this now uh, prayatna from our side the prayatna should happen but if we call now that room has been going on 
from the from the day we started right it's been going on every day now who has to take credit for the success of it it won't happen without bhagavat prerana right if 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 the bhagavan didn't want that to happen it won't happen now a how do we realize that bhagavan has been in our life first and foremost thing can we at least recognize we achieved some sort of success somewhere like for example on the same in the same club uh in the month of december when the geeta jayanti happened we had a simple sankalpa some random sankalpa that we will have uh you know uh, endless non stop you know uh, 24 hour geeta parayana it's easy to take the sankalpa it should materialize right different you know cog should fall in place different parts of the jigsaw should fall in place that did not happen without bhagavad prerana so before even we realize the bhagavan has been in our life i think the first thing is can we even recognize that we have had this siddhi maybe very minute until we are able to recognize that siddhi in each one of our lives understanding him becomes an extra so this shloka from many many points of view for me is a very very telling because it talk about talks about the tattva aspect of the vijnana vijnana is something that we experience now this is all now the story couple of stories i have towards for so far you know that happened within purushottam yoga not easy right it's not at all easy you know looking at random set of people coming and holding this entire event together you know and making sure that the event does not stop at all like you no know, different days sudha ji who's now in the audience you no know, she comes and picks up when the day suddenly one person has volunteer to lead us in a chapter you know that was person doesn't turn up and sudha ji is leading you know ramesh mohotaya has led us in so many different instances you know all of us you know different now this won't happen without the bhagavat prerana right so when i more and more i look at this shloka it gives me a lot of layered meaning like you know among many 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 people very few people strive for success among the people who strive for success very few people even acknowledge the success and among those people who acknowledge okay this has been successful very few people realize bhagavan's involvement in that siddhi because the literal meaning of siddhi is lakshmi lakshmi is his adhina bhagavan without bhagavan there is nothing that lakshmi can do when we understand the tattva very clearly we will know that in every instance of us if we can keep aside the entitlement that we develop on everything like today morning i got up many people don't get up in the morning when i look at that getting up is a success after that i had food right many people don't have food all of the, you know i have shelter i have power i pay the money even after paying money many people don't get power right so anything can go wrong look at the country like sri lanka so many rich people but perhaps are doing you know are, are struggling you know great extent to make the ends meet they have wealth you know immovable wealth and things like that right so many many instances we might keep on attributing a lot of things to a lot of things but we fail to realize that you know bhagavan has been around us tattvatah that's so when we say vijnana this you know, comprehensible knowledge also realizable knowledge i think we need to keep ourselves open okay to look at the receptors and we will we will hear more from bhagavan himself that we will hear more from bhagavan himself you know how differently to think about him so we quickly see what uh, arobindo interpretation says for this shloka ho oh, arjuna among thousands of men one here and there strives strives after perfection and of those who strive and attain to perfection one here and there knows me in all the principles of my existence very beautiful right let's click next we go to the fourth shloka tattva ai right? tattva sankhya ai he elaborates now the shloka reads like this bhumi rapo nalo vayu kammano buddhire vacha ahankara iti yamme bhinna prakriti rashtadha bhumi rapo nalo vayu kammano buddhire vacha ahankara iti yamme bhinna prakriti rashtadha this is the pad भूमि रापः आपः अनलः आपो नलः अनलः वायुः अनलः अनलः वायुः अनलो वायुः वायुः खम मनः बुद्धिः मनो बुद्धिः बुद्धिः एव बुद्धिरेव च 
अहंकार अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृति अष्टधा प्रकृति अष्टधा प्रकृति अष्टधा right so these are the words we unjumble these words and we get bhumi bhumi hi apah analah vayuh kham manah buddhi hi ahankar cha iti iyam me ashtadha bhinna prakriti hi eva so tattva he is now elaborating the tattva bhagavat tattva right now he is slowly beginning to elaborate the bhagavat tattva what does he say krishna bhumi hi when it click on dictionary the earth apah the water analah the fire vayuh the air kham ether akasha manah mind buddhi the intelligence the intellect ahankara the ego cha and also iti thus iyam this this me ashtadha prakriti ashtadha bhinna prakriti eva these are my eight fold bespoke prakriti alone indeed bhinna is divided or bespoke separate so he is now giving the elemental truth there are eight uh, you know divisions of his bhinna prakriti which is basically the five elements so bhumi apah analah vayu kham okay the earth the, uh, the 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 water the uh, fire the air and the sky these are the five pancha mahabhuta along with that mano buddhi ahankara right three antakaranas manah is something that will sometimes it's called the sixth indriya uh, in the 15th chapter we see here that manah shastan indriyani okay manah is added along with the indriyas because it is it is basically deriving experiences out of the activities of the indriyas suppose if i touch something if it is hot ah and it is warm like you know see hot and cold are, are measurable scientifically but what is warm right something that is cold can be warm something that is extremely hot can be warm and that's the warmth like right? the emotions are what the manas processes right manas is basically uh, attaching emotions to the sense experiences nice not so nice i love ice cream i know i the me liking the taste of ice cream which means the taste of ice cream being nice to me that niceness is the is the understanding of manas buddhi buddhi is the discriminatory power right the into the intellect reason okay hot and cold if i find something as hot very likely shraddha ji vijay ji will also find the same thing hot right hot cold and things like that are are given right they they, they are they are a physical form universally physical form right uh, i mean my my skin can be momentarily numb having kept it in the ice for about 5 minutes then suddenly something may not appear hot for me but that those are momentary you know delusions we can overcome that but beyond that the buddhi buddhi pretty much is the intellect and it is shareable like you know what is hot for me has to be hot for shraddha ji what is black for me has to be black for shraddha ji i can't say oh that's a nice color nice not so nice is the manas but this is black this is white this is gray this is teal this is all buddhi and ahankara ahankara is always you know the faculty the the, the inner instrument that will associate to what is mine what is ours you know, what belongs to me like you know, my name the minute somebody calls bharata if i turn my neck right it's ahankara coming to play ahankara understands okay this is me somebody is calling me this is my name my hand my house my son my vehicle my house you know all of this my ahankara my work i you know i am giving this talk you know all of this is ahankara now ahankara need not be bad right you have to have basic recognition durahankara that's why in india sanatana dharma is not ego which is wrong it's durahankara which is so we specially categorize not just ahankara it's durahankara which is wrong right cha ite iyam me ashtadha bhinna prakriti these are my bespoke eight fold prakriti now he is explaining even the prakriti is his right the nature is his when we look into the tattva tree i think we spoke about that right the each of the pancha mahabhuta uh, also are conductors of one of the tanmatra 
a unique tanmatra so tanmatra pancha mahabhuta and along with them we have the pancha jnanendriyas and the pancha karmendriyas on top of them comes the manas so manas being the niyamaka of all the 10 indriyas so manas kind of you know understands all the 10 indriyas also and because each of the tanmatras are hidden inside each of the mahabhuta all the tattvas are laid out in those eight those eight are eight are basically uh you know a collection of all the 23 right uh, 20 lower tattvas the pancha mahabhuta pancha tanmatras pancha jnanendriya pancha karmendriya and the mano buddhi ahankara right these are the eight now we move to let's see what quickly aurobindo interpretation says uh, moment ha huh. the five elements conditions of material being the solid liquid fiery gaseous ethereal mind with its various senses and organs reason ego this is my eightfold divided nature okay now oh, he is basically given the meaning that's going to come in the next shloka but we stop here and then go to the next shloka yeah so now krishna see krishna says i will tell you about that jnana how to think about me right now he is telling okay first not many people know me even after, even after tasting success they don't know me they don't know me with a see there is another thing that you know we keep going to tirupati offering uh, you know hundi dakshina and things like that but without knowing exactly the tattva you know, that's that's of no much use of course there is use in putting the money to the hundi because uh, the temple institution will do a lot of other work right it's always beneficial to do that not that it's not but it's not full right so we have to know him completely uh, and in knowing him he mentioned couple of things not many people know me is one thing to know about me and second thing is the eightfold nature is my bhinna prakriti right prakriti see again the world is very nice prakriti kriti is done made prakarshena kriva like you know, it's done by me it's created by me this eightfold nature is so this entire nature is also an action it's an act it's an act of bhagavan bhinna prakriti ashtadha so when we look into that right that's another way of looking at it no this is indeed my own act my prakarshana prakarshana is basically prakatita like you know something that is revealing something that is revealed act so this eightfold nature is my revealed act literally when we have to look into it right that can we can look even look into it because prakriti is the nature is basically an atma is the nature right and when we think about that right that is where perhaps our understanding of dharma becomes a little more clearer that's for another day but uh, the prakriti there is also krita kriti whose kriti bhagavan's kriti prakriti is basically bhagavan's kriti and not just another kriti it's a prakarshanat kriti so we'll see we'll go to the next one shloka number 5 we click on next right on the top it reads like this अपरेयमितस्वन्यां प्रकृतिं विद्धि मे परां जीवभूतां महाबाहो ययेदं धार्यते जगत् अपरेयमितस्वन्यां प्रकृतिं विद्धि मे परां जीवभूतां महाबाहो ययेदं धार्यते जगत् व्हेन वी सी द पद छेद अपरा इयम् अपरेयम् अपरा इयम् इतः तु अन्याम इयम इतः तु इतस्तु इतस्तु अन्याम इतस्तवन्याम अ फ्यू कपल ऑफ संधीज देयर प्रकृतिं विद्धि मे पराम जीवभूता महाबाहो यया इदम ययेदम धार्यति जगत् राइट द पदच्छेद व्हेन वी अनजंबल दीस वर्ड्स वी गेट द अन्वय इयम हे महाबाहो तु अपरा इतः ओके अन्यां जीवभूतां मे परां प्रकृतिं विद्धि यजा इदं जगत् धार्यते हे महाबाहो इयं तु अपरा इयं मींस दिस राइट सो वी सी द डिक्शनरी हे महाबाहो ओ महाबाहो सो महाबाहो व्हेनेवर वी हियर द वर्ड महाबाहो इट इज बेसिकली कृष्णा इंस्टिलिंग द सेंस ऑफ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी ऑन अर्जुन ये महाबाहो ओ अर्जुना इयम तु अपरा इयम इज मिसिंग इन दिस इयम दिस इज अपरा दिस इज द लोअर 
right? What is this? This is the eightfold, what we heard in the fourth sloka. This eightfold prakriti is apara prakriti. Itaha anyam jiva bhuta me param vidhi. Prakriti vidhi. Itaha from this anyam different. Different than this jiva bhuta. Okay, that, that which becomes the jiva. Me param prakriti vidhi. Listen to or know that supreme prakriti of mind. So again now, now he is classifying between the para prakriti and apara prakriti. He said or the bhuvirapo nalova yudukam manaha buddhi ahankara. This has the eightfold prakriti. But now we know that is only apara prakriti. That's only the lower prakriti. We are going above and above in the in the tattva tree after the ahankara. Okay, mano buddhi ahankara. Then comes the chitta. Chit. Okay. So when we hear the nirvana uh, shakkam, right? So mano buddhi ahankara. Chit. We have seen till ahankara. We go higher. No. Itaha anyam, higher than this, jiva bhutam, the one that becomes jiva bhuta. Me param prakriti buddhi, know that para prakriti of mind, which is chitta and above. We have to understand it's chitta and above. So that's what Shankaracharya, Agna Bhagavatam, has helped us with, right? When we understand the Nirvana Shakti. Prakriti buddhi, yaya, by which idam jagat dharyati, the entire world is upheld. So what does Aurobindo interpretation say for this? Okay. This eightfold nature is the lower. But no, my other nature, different from this, O oh, mighty arm, the supreme which becomes a jiva and by which this world is upheld. Okay. See, again, all of these shlokas are pretty much. Uh, uh, Shruti Vakya. Okay. This is all retold from the Shruti. Uh, some of us who attended uh, uh, the Mundaka uh, Atharvan Upanishad uh, session under this club called the Jata Veda, right? Uh, some kind of a Tasma, Jayate, Pranu, Manas Sarvendriyanicha, Samva Yurjyoti Rapa, Prutidi, Vishwasya Dhari. We saw that in the Mundaka. Most of these words you know, they keep repeating in many, many different aspects. So, whenever Krishna says something like this, uh, you know, one thing that we need to be very firm in the understanding is that most of these are Shruti Vakya. They have been repeated quite often in many, many different Upanishads and things like this. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Apara. So, these eightfold nature is the lower. No my other higher ones. What are the higher ones? We will hear it from Krishna. We will go to the next shloka, shloka number 6. Right? So, he is very clearly telling the prakriti that is told, the eightfold ashtadha prakriti, jinna ashtadha prakriti, the distinct eightfold prakriti, is the lower prakriti. Now he is going to talk about the higher prakriti that becomes the jiva, okay, which which supports the entire jiva rashi, jiva kana. Right? Shloka number 6, it reads like this. Etadyonini bhutani sarvani chupadharaya ahankritsnasya jagata prabhava pralayastatha. Etadyonini bhutani sarvani chupadharaya ahankritsnasya jagata prabhava pralayastatha. The Padacheda says etadyonini bhutani sarvani iti padharaya ahankritsnasya jagata prabhava pralayastatha. Uh, he is giving more and more details. What does he say? You click on dictionary. Sarvani Bhutani Etat Yonini. All beings come from this womb. Aham Krishnasya Jagataha Prabhavaha Tata Pralayaha Iti Upadharaya. So know that I am the entire world's cause of creation. And also the dissolution. Prabhavaha pralayaha tatha krishnam jagatasya. Krishnasya jagataha of the, of the entire world. Prabhavaha and pralayaha iti upadharaya. For upadharaya is a very beautiful word. Keep reminding yourself. Upadharaya. Constantly keep that thought in you. Internalize that thought. Upadharaya. 
no understand this one but constantly remind yourself that the bhagavan is the soul prabhava and pralaya of the entire jagat he is the soul reason behind and all the bhuta rashis are from his yoni etad yoni ni sarva bhuta ni sarvani bhuta ni right now more about his apara prakriti right one is that you know he says no uh, yaya yaya idam jagat dharyate okay yaya jeeva bhutam dharyate you know from on which the entire jeeva ganas are residing in the previous shloka and here he says this is the one through which all the jeeva bhutas have sprung out okay and this is the this big vijnana of the bhagavan about him about paramatma is that he is the sole cause of the entire creation dissolution activities of this jagat right those are some of the fine points that he is narrating let's quickly see what arbindra interpretation says no this to be the womb of all beings and the birth of the whole world and so to its dissolution aham prasthasya jagatah prabhavah pralayah tatha we want to the next one shloka number 7 of this chapter mattah parata rannanyat kinchid asti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam krotam sutre manigana iva okay so this is beautiful right seven shloka of the seven chapter and seven is a beautiful number for us uh 700 shlokas of bhagavad gita right sapta shati we call it uh at the end of it all only seven people survived you know the five pandavas draupadi and krishna the seven seven is a very uh, beautiful number for us seven in seven the seventh one in seven is one of the best shlokas i think it's the biggest uh, uh, statement made by bhagavan let's see what padacheda says mattah parataram na anyat kinchit asti dhananjaya mattah parataram na anyat bikam na na anyat किंचित अस्ति किंचित अस्ति मयि सर्वम इदं प्रोतम सूत्रे मणिगणाः इव मणिगणाः इव कृतं मणिगणाः इव मत्तः परतरं न अन्य किंचित अस्ति धनंजय मयि सर्वम इदं प्रोतम सूत्रे मणिगणाः राइट व्हाट इज द अन्वय से हे धनंजय मत्तः परतरं अन्य किंचित न अस्ति इदं सर्वम सूत्रे मणिगणाः इव मयि प्रोतम वेरी बिग स्टेटमेंट दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग लेट्स सी व्हाट इट मींस ए धनंजय वो द वन हु विन्स अ लॉट ऑफ वॉर सो व्हेन वी विन द वॉर वी गेट द स्पॉइल्स ऑफ द वॉर स्पॉइल्स ऑफ द वॉर धन वेल्थ सो वी वी गेट मनी बाय विनिंग वॉर राइट एज अ क्षत्रिय एंड अर्जुन इज नोन टू विन अ लॉट ऑफ वॉर ही ऑलवेज विन्स राइट मत्तः परतरं अन्यत् किञ्चित् न अस्ति बियॉन्ड मी देयर इज नो अदर सुप्रीम मत्तः परतरं नो अन्यत् किञ्चित् न अस्ति नॉट अ सिंगल थिंग एग्जिस्ट व्हिच इज बियॉन्ड मी एज सुप्रीम देयर इज नो नथिंग सुपीरियर देन मी बेसिकली सूत्रे मणिगणाः इव जस्ट लाइक द बीट्स यू नो इन द थ्रेड ओके इव मयि इदं सर्वं प्रोतम ऑल दिस व्हिच इज लिविंग बीइंग्स जीव भूता ऑल द लिविंग बीइंग्स राइट द सर्व भूतानि सर्वाणि भूतानि राइट दैट्स व्हाट वी हर्ड इन द प्रीवियस लोक इदं सर्वं मयि सूत्र सूत्रे मणिगणाः इव प्रोतम ऑल द जीव भूतास आर हैंगिंग ऑन टू मी आर थ्रेडेड ऑन टू मी just like how the beads are threaded into the thread the string right this is a very beautiful shloka let's quickly see what arbindo interpretation says we click back on shloka there is nothing else supreme supreme beyond me mattah parataram anyat kinchit na asti there is nothing else supreme beyond me o dhananjaya he dhananjaya on me all that is here okay idam sarvam okay 
See, is strung like pearls upon a thread. Sutre manigana iva mai protam. Well, this is a very beautiful one, right? So, uh, few things about the the sutra and the manigana. There are more and more thoughts we can always bring. So, basically, there are many many manis manigana. Not not just mani mani gana. There are many groups of manis. Like you no, know, you can bring different different types of manis, different different groups of manis. Not just different types of manis. Like you have a few you know, pearls, a few other things made of coral. You know, you can have diff different stones. Mani gana, multiple different manis. They are all strung into a thread, made into a nice garland. Garland is something that we wear. We do the dharana of the garland, right? And when we see the garland, we see the money. We don't see the thread, right? And the thread is not attached to the money. The thread never becomes one with the money. The thread will never, never obstruct the money. When we look into it more and more, right? And a small cut off from the thread, all the money ganas will fall, just fall. The minute they detach themselves from the thread, they just go for a pump. Right. So when we when we look into this simile, see Bhagavad Gita is loaded with amazing, amazing similes, and this is another very beautiful one. Right. So you can look at Bhagavanta as the Sarva Vyapta Nirlipta. He is there behind all of us, but not seen. So, so this is a very beautiful example, right? So, and and very importantly, he has made that very telling uh, declaration. There is nothing beyond me, right? We are not equal to him. We will never become equal to him. Okay, and there is nothing above him. Okay, so let's see. He, he, he will not he will not just talk here, right? He's going to give us a little more elaboration about it. We will see the next one. So, but this is a very beautiful one. Sutre Manigana Iva. It shows the the comprehensive knowledge that we spoke about, right? At the beginning, the first, the second shloka. You know, the Vijnana, basically, uh, Vistara Jnana, you know, Vistata Jnana, you know, Vikrishta Jnana, you know, Vividhataya Jnana, you know, Vishishta Jnana. You look into that, right? Uh, let's move on to the next one. When we on top of the page, we click on next. Right? Om Rasoha Mapsu Kaunte Yat Prabhas Nishashi Surya Yo Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda Ke Pavurusham Rushu Rasoha Mapsu Kaunte Yat Prabhas Nishashi Surya Yo Pranava Sarva Vedeshu Shabda ke paurusham rushu. The Padacheda says, Rasaha aham rasoham. Rasaha aham apsu. Kaunteya. Prabha asmi. Prabha asmi. Shashi surya yo. Pranavaha sarva vedeshu. Shabda ke paurusham rushu. Right? When we unjumble them, we read the Anvaya in the prose order, right? He kaunte ya aham apsu rasaha shashi surya yohu prabha sarva vedeshu pranavaha khe shabdaha drushu paurusham asmi. So, more elaboration of that uh, para prakriti, right? Chit prakriti. There is a chit achit, right? Broadly. All the things that we spoke about are achit. They don't have anything by themselves. Like Bhumi, Rapu, Naro, Vaji, Kham. All of them are, they are all transient. They are all Jara Prakriti. Right? They are all Apara Prakriti. Now he is explaining more. He Kaunte Ya, He Kunti Putra. We click on Dikshtai. He Kaunte Ya, He Kunti Putra Arjun. Aham Apsu Rasaha Asmi. I am the Rasa. In the water, Apsu, in the waters, I am the Rasaha. Shashi Surya Yoho Prabha Asmi. 
in the sun and the moon i am the prabha right i am the light okay sarva vedeshu pranavah asmi in all the vedas i am the pranava pranava is the umkara aham che shabdah asmi i am the shabda in the akasha and nrushu paurusham asmi and among men in men i am the paurusha paurusha is the is the energy right through which we accomplish many of our uh, life uh, objectives right we need to have the power so i am that power shall in all the men in people power shall basically in people power shall is the is the is the energy with which uh, we show perseverance we put any prayatna if we have to put any prayatna in anything we need to have that power shall right so basically krishna is now explaining his apara prakriti his dham now he is explaining his para prakriti more and more he is the rasa in the water right the water water is so when we look into it literally it doesn't mean much but apsu right the liquid state of matter the key tanmatra the key experience the unique experience of the liquid form he is the rasa uh, when you say you know the pancha mahabhuta as uh, you know bhumi rapo naro vayu kham the respective tanmatra sa you know gandha rasa roopa shabda sparsha right these are the five uh, you know experiences in in bhumi we have the gandha the smell in apa apu apaha apus we have the rasa gandha rasa in the anala bhumi rapo anala anala is the jyoti there we have the roopa gandha rasa roopa and then in the vayu we have the sparsha such and in the aakasha we have the shabda right so he is so basically he is telling i am that experience in the water right i am the taste that gets conducted in the water basically we have to say tanmatra the experiences in the material body i am that experience that you see in the apsu but careful to note even the apsu is his prakriti is his bhinna ashtadha but apara prakriti so the apu the water is also part of him in that the rasa is him okay shashi surya yoho prabha asmi okay shashi surya anala they are all fire right they are all fire they are all light i am that prabha i am that radiance i am that radiance in both sun and so anala so any fire fire body is him even the shashi surya are part of his para no apara prakriti they are all part of the material manifestation but the radiance in them the radiance that they emit is his para prakriti is him sarva vedeshu pranavah in all the knowledge in all the vedas he is the omkar the omkara itself is the akshara brahma omkara itself is the shabda brahma it's everything right the omkara is him we keep in many many vedas the one thing that we constantly hear is the omkara in any line we keep hearing the omkara that is in the essence of the vedas is omkara the essence of all the vedas is him pranavah sarva vedesh and khe shabda asmi in the sky and the shabda ji the experience of the sky is shabda shabda is the tanmatra in aakasha and nrushu among people and the paurusha and that energy okay which helps us uh, to do anything that we want to do right our energy cannot happen without thing he is the purusha he is he is the purushottam right we will we'll see that later but he is the he is the purusha from him comes the purusha right so you please see what arubind the translation says i am the taste in the water i would rather keep the original word i am the rasa in the water for son of kunti i am the prabha in the sun and the moon 
I am the Pranava in all the Vedas. I am the Shabda in the Akasha. And I am the Paurusha in people. I won't call it as manhood in men. I would rather keep it as Paurusha in people. Because Nara, Nrishu, is people. Okay, Nara Dipa, it doesn't mean that he is just king for men. He is just leader for men. Men and women are part of the society and also children. So it's for everyone, right? People. And Paurusha, these are all uh, gender neutral, some of these terms. In the context, context of understanding at least, they need to be gender neutral. We'll perhaps see one shloka for today and, and wrap up. So the ninth shloka, it says, Punyo Gandha Prithivyancha Tejas Chasmi Vibhavasa Jeevanam Sarva Bhuteshu Tapas Chasmi Tapas Vishu Punyo Gandha Prithivyancha Tejas Chasmi Vibhavasa Jeevanam Sarva Bhuteshu Tapas Chasmi Tapas Vishu The Padachira says Punyo Gandha Prithivyancha Tejaha cha asmi vibhavasau. Jeevanam sarva bhuteshu. Tapaha cha asmi tapasvishu. Punya gandha, punyo gandha. Tejaha cha asmi tejas cha asmi. Tapaha cha asmi tapas cha asmi. These are the common similar sentences. We will put them back in the prose order. We get to see that in the Anvaya. The Anvaya says, Prithivyamcha punya gandaha. We can imply asmi. That's the word being used. It's been used this year also. Asmi. Punya gandaha prithivyam asmi. Tejaha vibhavasau asmi. Sarva bhuteshu jivanam asmi. Tapasvishu tapahacha asmi. So what does that mean? We click on dictionary. Hey, Partha. Also, in the earth, I am the Punya Gandha. Right? I am the good. Now, this is this Punya. It's a very beautiful qualifier, right? Pure scent, clean scent, pleasant scent, good scent. Punya can be nice, good, good, right? All the, all the auspiciousness is Punya. All the right. Now, apply the same thing to the Rasa. Punya Rasa Apsu. Punyaha Shabdaha Che. I think we have to apply that all of them. Punyaha Gandaha Prithivyam. Okay. Tejaha Vibhava So I am the energy of life. I am the light. Teja. I am the brilliance in the fire. Vibhava So. But Vibhava So the fire is basically his Apara Prithivy. Anala is his Apara Prithivy. Cha Asmi. Sarva Bhuteshu Jeevanam Asmi. I am the life in every living being. And tapas vishu tapahacha asmi. I am also the tapa, the tapas shakti in all the tapasvis. People might be looking like they are, they are striving a lot. Now come back to the third sloka, right? Yatatamati siddhana, prashtinma, meti tattata. All of these are siddhi. No, the punya gandha in the prithvi is the siddhi. The punya rasa in the apsu is the siddhi. The Punya Shabda in the K is the Shiddhi. The Prabha in the Shashi Surya is a Siddhi. Right? It becomes a Siddhi. When sun does not give light, it's a Siddhi. Right? Similarly, Sarva Bhuteshu Jeevanam is a Siddhi. Without Jeevana, it's a useless body lying down. Right? So, when we look into this and that, right, we will know God is there everywhere. Among many, many people who are attempting Siddhi, he is there. He is the one. He is the one. The Siddhi is him eventually through his prakriti, which is lucky. That's what we get to see in Avarakosha. Avarakosha, Siddhi, the equivalent term is Devi, Lakshmi. The him. He is giving that. Right? We'll round it off. Right? So this is the elaborate way. Both the Apara Prakriti is part of him and the Para Prakriti is him. That's what he's saying. Everything is part of him. Right? Now he's elaborate. Now because the, the last look of the sixth chapter is Shraddhavan Bhajate Yoma. The one endowed with absolute Shraddha when they offer themselves completely to me. But how do we think about him? 
is a question. Then he says, Asamshayam samagram maam yata jnyasati pachrunu. Here the way you have to know me in its complete sense, let me reveal it to you. But is that enough? No, I don't think so. Right? Because he can say it in his complete sense, but we are alpha buddhis, manda buddhis. We can only grasp the little. Right? Let's quickly see what Aurobindo interpretation says. I am the pure scent in earth. Punya gandha prithilpya. Energy of light in the fire. Tejaha asmi vipavasa. I am the life in all existence, Jeevanam Sarvabhutation, and the ascetic force of the ones who do ask if it's tapas tishu, tapas shakti. Right? This is a very beautiful chapter. I think when we contemplate a little seriously into this, it's a very easy way in which we can understand the Bhagavad Tattva. He is explaining the Bhagavad Tattva from now on. Right? The next three, 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 four chapters, we see a beautiful account of the Bhagavad Tattva being presented to us. By Bhagavan, right? So these are very, and that, that is essential for us. Once we understand the Bhagavan's Purana Swarupa, the Bhuti Swarupa, then we know that we are all his own Amsha. There is a little bit of that Amsha we can see within all of us also. And that is what will propel us to the path of greatness. Because once we become Kartavya Sadaka, no time to hang up the boots, right? We keep on burning the gas pedal. You know, the, the same intensity for the sole purpose of reaching higher and higher and higher. Otherwise, you might end up becoming like Ravana. The Rama Ravana, which is a very, very thin line. So that brings us to the conclusion of today's uh, reading of the meaning. Very beautiful chapter. There is no Arjuna Uvacha. Pure 30 shlokas of Bhagavan Uvacha. Very beautiful meaning here. Before we conclude, uh, people are welcome to come up on stage and share your views. What we do here is... Uh, very sincere attempt to understand the word by word breakdown of Bhagavad Gita shloka, trying to get a very clean understanding of the shloka Tatparya. Uh, we do a couple of things under this Purushottama Yoga Club for Bhagavad Gita. One is the everyday chanting that we do from morning 6 o'clock. We chant about 100 shlokas every morning. Let's uh, meet again. We'll resume with shloka number 10 of the 7th chapter uh, next Saturday. And the reverse count of three, let's conclude the room. Three, two, one. Namaste Vasudevaya Sri Yasami Priyotama Samastaguna Sampurna Nirdoshan and the Dai Mukoti Yatrasa Dena Mukunda Shayanayati Raja Raja Yate Rikto Raja Vintram Tamashtai. Have a beautiful Sunday evening and have a beautiful week ahead. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna.